Imagine going through your entire life being hated and disregarded by pretty much everyone in your life to the point where you have no faith in people at all. You live this way until you randomly witness the gruesome murder of three of your high school bullies by a cursed spirit at a movie theater. Because you're indifferent toward their deaths, you cautiously approach this cursed spirit who offers you hope and your negative ideals through embracing your darkness. Shortly after, you meet a boy who offers you the exact opposite, a fulfilling life view based on positive ideals. You don't know how to handle this because you went from zero friends to two friends who are polar opposites in their views of the world. Although this struggle defines your character, your story is cut short to serve the higher purposes of these two groups that you're stuck in between. Such is the life of Junpei Yoshino, so let's get into his story. It's September 2018. A young 17 year old Junpei Yoshino skips school to watch a movie and skip the monotony of the everyday life of a student. He's surprised and a bit dismayed to see that three of his classmates have skipped class also to see this movie. See, these three were three bullies. Early Earlier in the day, a girl accused Junpei of staring at her while she was running. The boys picked on him for this and Junpei is so fed up that he accuses the girl of using him to confirm her status. He also accuses the boys of backing the girl up and attacking him to impress the girl. Junpei despises these individuals and is made even worse when they talk and play on their phones during the movie. At this point, the evil cursed spirit Mahito shows up at the theater and kills his three classmates with his idle transfiguration jutsu. It's not a jutsu, this is not Naruto. His transfiguration technique. Junpei sees this happen, but he's not upset by the outcome. He's actually just intrigued by the occurrence in general. He confronts Mahito, asking him if he could do the same thing that Mahito just did. It's at this point that Mahito decides to teach Junpei the fundamentals of curses. Junpei's view of the world is expounded on here, but we're going to talk about that more in a little bit. For now, let's just say Junpei doesn't think very highly of people, as is obvious by his comments about his classmates. Mahito shows Junpei many things, including the corpses of the transfigured humans that Mahito messes with, but none None of it really bothers him. He's so indifferent to things that he pretty much shows no emotion at all. Mahito uses this to his advantage. He begins to twist Junpei's mind into thinking that hatred and the pursuit of carnal desire such as killing is alright. He should live and do as he please, and that includes killing whenever the mood strikes. With Mahito's brainwashing of Junpei well underway, we then skip to Junpei meeting somebody from the complete opposite of the spectrum, Yuji. Junpei's walking home after skipping school for a day and he's confronted by one of his teachers, Sotomura Sensei. Sotomura talks about how the boys died earlier on in the movie theater and Junpei skipped their funeral, so he's pretty upset with him. He verbally tortures Junpei saying that the boys must have been his good friends because they took care of him and always looked out for him even though he knew that was not true at all. Junpei begins to lose it. It's very obvious that this bullying is a common occurrence and the boy's mind has already been twisted by Mahito. So he finally begins to speak his mind when he's interrupted by Yuji chasing a flying head cursed spirit. Yuji confirms that Junpei can see the flying head spirit so he pulls him aside from his conversation with his teacher. The teacher is still being a pain to both boys so Yuji pantses him, grabs Junpei and runs away. He could tell that Junpei didn't like the teacher at all, so he decides to do that to gain some favor in the boy's eyes. He decides to befriend Junpei, and Junpei was encouraged to do the same by Mahito from very early on in his brainwashing. Yuji quickly questions Junpei about the incident at the movie theater, and then the two hit it off talking about old obscure movies. Pseudo Geto sees this interaction, and since he and Mahito have been cooking up this scheme from the very start, he's very pleased by the interaction. We continue to see Yuji and Junpei grow as friends, with Yuji actually meeting his mom and agreeing to have dinner with him. Junpei's mom is a drunk and she gets drunk in front of Yuji the very first time they meet which Junpei isn't really proud of but he loves his mom more than anything in this world as she's been his rock through his entire hard childhood and Yuji can tell. They all have a great time until Junpei's mom falls asleep drunk and then the boys get to talk about their philosophies regarding life. Yuji tells Junpei that he'd rather not kill anyone ever because if he ever questions the value of life then maybe the value of the lives of those close to him will fade in importance too. Junpei's inner monologue with himself tells that these words saved him. He loved his mother more than anything else in the world, and if he were to ever take a life and his mother's importance faded to him, he couldn't live with himself. He would never kill. That's what he thought then. As soon as Junpei's mom wakes up, tragedy strikes. One of Sukuna's fingers was left unattended in Junpei's house to attract cursed spirits, and his mom was found dead the next day. Junpei's world crumbles before his eyes. He takes the finger to the only person he thinks can help him in this depressive state, Mahito. 
He tells Junpei that the finger was likely planted in his home by somebody that hates him and his mom, even though we know that he and Geto were actually the ones who planted it there. Junpei is next seen terrorizing his school's award ceremony, supervised by Mahito and Geto. It's revealed that these two have been using him this whole time to get to Sukuna and Yuji, to give Sukuna some leverage against Yuji using a binding vow. Junpei now leaves Sotomura sensei and a guy named Shota Ito awake while everyone else in the school is knocked out. He begins torturing Ito, who we can assume is somebody that bullies Junpei, and in Junpei's mind has the money and resources to plant the finger in his home that led to his mother's death. He is ruthless in this torture, but right before he kills the boy, Yuji shows up to save Junpei from himself. The two fight, their ideals clashing, with Yuji representing undying optimism and the protection of people at all costs, while Junpei believes that those who deserve to die should die, and that righteous people like Yuji are gaslighting themselves into believing that compassion for people should be upheld no matter the cost, no matter how bad these people are. The two friends' relationship is in shambles as they disagree on a baseline philosophy of life. We now see that Mahito is the one who taught Junpei to use his cursed technique, which is poison, when he came to him after his mother's death. Now Yuji's handing him an L in this fight pretty handily, and he also tells Junpei that he doesn't believe that Junpei believes his own philosophy, but Junpei was actually telling Yuji all this to try to make himself believe it. Junpei knows this to be true, but it confuses him even more. Now he has a touching moment with Yuji, where Yuji tells him they can work this all out together. But just then Mahito shows up behind Junpei and he traps Yuji against the wall. Junpei trusts him fully, so what happens next breaks my heart. With Yuji pinned to the wall, Mahito uses idle transfiguration on Junpei, turning him into a monster. Yuji begs Sukuna for help to stop and reverse this transfiguration, but he refuses. Junpei dies, and Yuji's forced to fight Mahito, boldly declaring that he was going to kill him, even after all that talk earlier about how he would never kill anybody. They fight now, and Nanami shows up, but nobody really wins. I mean, Mahito was getting beat up but this rivalry lives on for another day. Now the teacher that bullied Junpei confronts the student that bullied Junpei after his death. After a discussion about their wrongs to the boy, the teacher remorsefully remarks that the two of them will forever have to live with the fact that they killed Junpei Yoshino's heart which led to his eventual death. Junpei's relationships with people defined his life, and his end was brutal and unfair, but it was poetic in a way. When he finally decided that Yuji was right, and that killing and all this other bad stuff was wrong, he was betrayed and murdered by the other person who tried to draw him in the opposite direction. JJK is a series that explores many themes and ideologies. It's characterized by a cast of characters who leave their unique mark on the audience because of their unique philosophies on life. For example, Yuji represents cautious optimism and the need to put it all on the line for the sake of others, where Megami believes in saving the good at the expense of the bad. Now variations of this ideology are presented further on down in the story, but the character of Junpei represents a pessimistic yet realistic stance on life. Junpei's life was completely upended when he was thrust headfirst into the world of Jutsu sorcery. A victim of circumstance and manipulation, Junpei symbolizes what can happen when the light of life is offered but then jerked out of reach for good. Now because Yuji represents the good in this dark world, you may want to learn more about him, so I suggest you check out this video linked on screen about his parents. Until next time, peace.